watching Rebuild Projects. Well, I was all gung ho and trying to get the bulkhead for the sleeper cabin door and the helm uh, fiberglassed. And I got really excited because it, that's such a pivotal big moment. And then I realized I got to tab it to the side of the hull and there is no side of the hull. And trying to keep everything to a minimum of cost and time, this is how I'm going to do it. So in recapping, we've got the top uh, bow deck um, and we've got that little extension all done. And that has established the height of where the gunnel connects and this beautiful angle that we have, which we were able to run through on both sides. So I had a big bunch of framing in here that I took out today in order to go move on to this next step. But basically that framing allowed me to fiberglass all this into place. So this is, this is roughly fiberglassed and I've done a little bit of grinding just to, just to clean it up a little bit. But I've done it on both sides, so they're both um, mirror images of each other. And now I need to figure a way of taking this gunnel cap and tying it into the hull side. I could simply just put fiberglass over it, uh, but from my little experience of, uh, or a lot of experience now, but of fiberglassing, anytime I try to just put fiberglass without some sort of backer, it, it always fails. You start getting, uh, well, you get this. You get wows and bows, and this has all got to get ground down and cut out. So I need a backer, but I don't want a backer that I have to take away later. Um, so that brings us to wow, why I got those panels at that uh, Facebook Marketplace sale, you know, that moving sale I got. So I got a bunch of panels, if you remember, I think six or eight of them, and they had flanges on them. They're made out of uh, glass. Well, they're made of fiberglass, but they're, uh, they're fiberglass reinforced panels uh, with some gel coat on them. So I've cut the flanges off. And I'm going to reuse those for some hatches. Uh, that'll be a little thing down the road. I've taken my grinder. I've ground down to the. I've ground down to past the gel coat down to the fiberglass all along the edge, and then I've just taken a 40 grit sandpaper and I scoured the surface. Now, what am I going to do with these? These are not going to be structural, but I'm going to make them as structural as I can. And I, what I just need is something to help me out. When I do add the layers of fiberglass afterwards. So what I'm going to do here, I've got a little inner lip. So I can take some thickened epoxy, some mastic, put it along that, this edge and screw it and it'll suck them together. And it should create just maybe a, an eighth of an inch lip that I can fare out later on. We have the old hull, which is the back layer, and that's about an eighth of an inch thick. And then we made a new skin or a new layer, a composite layer of foam and three layers of fiberglass. We did that when the boat was flipped up, if you remember. When the boat was... Yeah. And then the outer skin, which is three layers of woven roving, two layers and one of 1708. Oh, and then there was some chop mat on it. Um, so that's what made up the outer skin. Uh, but so I can cut away just that outer skin uh, to kind of inset the panel to make it as flush as I can and just mix up some more thickened epoxy, screw it in there, clamp, it'll clamp everything down. And that will give me a backer panel in which I can then lay fiberglass and roll it out. And I want to be able to lay like a 10 foot by 30 inch piece of fiberglass and be able to stretch it and manipulate it so that then I can just wet that whole thing out, maybe two or, th two or three layers at least on the outside. And that will be, you know, the final outer skin layer. We're going to have to fare that and do some priming. 
and then on the inside I can take some woven roving, maybe two layers, and solidify this gunnel cap from the bottom of the inside all the way down this joint, down the back and then inside and on the, the old hull and then get that nice and strong. So that will give me just like a, a 5 8 to 3 quarter inch thick hull from at least this point down. And then from this point up it'll be strong and structural. That's the way I'm going to do it. Um, like I said, probably a lot of different ways you could do it. Uh, maybe establishing this wasn't the best idea, but you know what? That's what I'm working with. I'm trying to keep this rolling. And to get that bulkhead uh, to be so I can tab it all in, um, I need to get this done this week. Both sides, fiberglassed, fared, into primer. Now I just spent a bunch of time here uh, sanding the hull. Let's recap quickly. I had the patch panels that I polyester resined in place with some thickened resin. And then I took the extra resin that I had mixed up because I, and then I just fared out the edges. So once, once that's set, I was able to come back and I'm using an aggressive 36 grit um, sandpaper on my orbital sander just to knock down anything that is proud, so any bumps or whatever. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill all these little holes because I want a nice uh, flat substrate for when we move on to the next step, which is fiberglassing over top of all of this area here. Now I'm going to drape some woven roving next over top of the gunnels. I'll probably end up screwing it down with some battens just so that it holds its place because this is another thing I learned is uh, trying to do a large section of fiberglass. It just wants to fall and, and it, it doesn't want to cooperate.
The next day has arrived and all of our resin has kicked off. It's uh, not tacky, but it is laminating resin, so it's not fully cured. I did not put any peel ply on this. I just let it go and it is solid. Even the areas that didn't have any backer board. So the areas that had backer board, not only is it really adhered to it, but it's like, it, 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 there's no air bubbles, it's beautiful. These areas here have a little distortion, uh, but that's okay because between the stern here where there was no backer panel and this area here where there's a con, concave and a, there's, there's multiple things going on here. That's why I didn't do it. At least I can take a sander today, uh, sand off any high spots. I can mix up some thickened resin um, and I could add a little extra hardener to it to make it kick off quick. And then I can just float all that area. Uh, and then within half an hour, I'll be able to sand it up and really contour it. Uh, as well as at the back. But when I put my straight edge to, to the boat, I mean, I'm pretty darn happy with how this is going. Uh, of course, I'm gonna cut this layer off along the gunnel and get rid of the access, get rid of the uh, strapping for now, because once everything has been kind of you know, sanded and, and brought to a, a level where I think the lines and the fairing is, is okay, then we're gonna put another layer of fiberglass on today. So, same technique, draping it, but this time I'm gonna stagger the joint between four and six inches higher so that when I do my final fairing, I'm not competing with a big lumpy seam Everything's kind of staggered up and I can sand it all back and, and fare it out. So, uh, so far so good. So all the strapping is here because I'm trying to build up this edge of the gunnel. Um, now the, the original gunnel had these nice crisp edges and uniformed molded look to it. Um, you can only get that when you build on one of these things in a mold. That was one of the reasons I tried to reuse this because for the most part I can sand back to those nice factory edges. But in the case where I've patched it and I'm trying to do a transition all the way back down to the transom, um, my thought being, if I pack this in, well, first I started, I got some of this um, strapping. I put some sheathing tape on one side and the top so that I can peel this off once all my thickened resin has cured. Uh, but what it also allows me to do is really pack in there pack in all of this thickened resin and then I tried my best to shape it all off uh, with my squeegee with my um, with my car bondo squeegee 
Uh, it still has some bumpy areas, so I've let it sit for a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to come back with a little trick. So I take in, take some uh, styrene, and I got a little paintbrush, and I can come back with the styrene. I got this trick from uh, watching drywallers on commercial jobs, and they come back and they wipe their joints down sometimes, and it. They say, and what I've noticed is that it allows for a lot less sanding. Now I'm using styrene because if I was to use water, it wouldn't work with the polyester resin. Um, I have made a mixture here of cabosil, talc, and microbubbles with polyester, uh, laminating resin. I'm doing laminating resin because it will allow me to sand it a little bit, but I can also work with it. Now see in this area here, where it's still waiting to set up, um, it's quite bumpy. I'm going to take and just dip my spatula and give it a pull. Give it a pull from maybe this side here. And maybe it'll smooth out. Yes, it's smoothing out. Okay, nice. And the styrene just acts like a, well, one, like a lubricant, two, uh, it doesn't affect the polyester resin. But it allows me to smooth it out a little bit better, get my angle a little more like I wanted it. Now I come back and I'll just, because it's all going to get sanded. It's all going to get sanded because what I'm going for is I'm going to take my longboard same one that I used for the hull, and I will be able to sand this whole edge down so that it's nice and straight without any waves. And I'm doing that now because when I go to fair out the hull sides that we've been working on, I want to fair it out to a nice straight edge all the way down. Now I'm never going to get a factory finish, but by doing this, sanding it back, sanding this angle as best as I can to make it look intentional, um, primer to paint, a little more fairing probably, it's going to give me a good look. It's going to look like, you know, somebody didn't just throw this all together, which I've been throwing it all together, but you get the drift. So that's the whole reason I'm doing this. Pack it in tight, smooth it out, peel these off, sand it down, and then I can do my fairing on the sides. So now that I've peeled off and taken off those furring strips wrapped in sheathing tape, it's given me the ability now to sand a nice straight edge along the gunnel side here and up along. Once I've got it to where I want it, I'll give the top profile uh, a little sand. So I'm going to do the longer board on this side profile and then I'm going to use a different variation for this uh, front lip. Once that's all done, we're gonna be ready to then mix up a bunch of uh, fairing and just coat liberally the whole side here. So let me get the mask on and there we go.
So we put all that time into straightening this line out of the gunnel here, the front leading edge. And uh, over and above it being an aesthetic reason to make it nice and nice to look at, uh, we're also using it because it, it's going to be a nice, uh, I'm going to call it a like a guide rail. And what I mean by that is our next stage is to ply fairing on the side. And my philosophy in this is I'd rather do multiple thin coats and build it up um, rather than do one big thick coat and then have to sand it down. Um, and what helps me to get the coat as thin as possible is not only the consistency of the fairing that we're going to make, and I'll go over my recipe in a minute, uh, but I like the consistency to be thinner than peanut butter, easier to spread. Uh, and once we put it on, you know, just liberally put it on, we'll come back with one of these stainless steel sheets. I love these things. So the, the, they're four inches wide by this one's 18 and this one's about 24, 28 inches. I like the four inches for my hands because when I'm uh, using them, if it were any thinner, my fingers would have a tendency to slip and get into the, the fairing. So that way I, I can hold on to it nicely, especially in gloves where it's a little slipperier. And, it, and if, I, if I slide a little bit, but the other reason I love these is because they're great for concave and convex shapes, but they're also great for compound curves. So this hull is slightly compound curved. Um, it'll allow me to put on, you know, maybe a quarter inch of fairing and then pull it all off and skim it, but in a compound curve kind of manner where I can put a little pressure on the top and pull a little out with the thumb and then it'll give me a uniform one eighth inch thick coating for every pass that I go. And then the other thing is I'm going to have about the first top inch will be a leading edge and I'm going to push it up against this nice straight line that we just sanded. And that will allow me to skim everything with the pressure of the leading edge. And if we didn't have that, if we, if we left it a little bumpy as I was pulling along here, that that would mirror itself in the side of the hull. So because we put the time in here, now we can use it as a guide rail, skim everything back and do one, two, maybe three passes at the end of the day. So that's our next step. Mixing time. So, the things you're going to need are a bucket for mixing your big batch of fairing compound, um, a lid, a mixing paddle. I like using a smaller measured, uh, measuring bucket that has the ounces or milliliters on the side uh, for the resin specifically because then you'll know how much uh, resin you're going to mix. And then you have different additives. Uh, Cabasil, which is a fume silica industrial talc and glass bubbles or microspheres. I also like a little uh, styrene and some acetone on hand. Once you have everything ready to go, um, you can make your mix, your little recipe. Now each of these ingredients have a different attribute that adds to the total mixture, kind of like baking. Um, but I don't, you know, measure everything out really specific. I kind of go uh, by my feel when I'm looking at the consistency and the only thing I really pay attention to is measuring out the resin and the hardener or the catalyst. Now, um, I've done a lot of experimentation, trial and error on the bow and I think I'm finally confident to share with you kind of the recipe I use. Um, and because we're gonna be doing both sides, uh, I'm gonna have to mix up this big batch. Now, the side itself is 12 feet long and 30 feet or 30 inches wide. And we're gonna do it an eighth of an inch thick. So when you calculate all that up, we're gonna need about 40 ounces of resin. I want to catalyze it at 3%, which is a little higher than normal. Um, and we're going to mix these together first, and then we're going to use our additives. So 
additive wise, cabosil, which is a fumed silica, has the attributes of, you know, like glass or sand, where uh, basically it's hydrophobic or it, it's, it, it, it doesn't allow water to kind of permeate it. So it's really good for a nice hard coating, uh, but a, by itself, it would, wouldn't be able to sand that well. Um, talc, just like talcum powder that you would get at your, you know, your uh, department store, um, you can buy it in uh, 10 pound bags from my supplier. So same stuff, um, pretty much. Uh, but this uh, gives you a little more of a creamier consistency. Um, and then the magic, the magic ingredient here are the glass bubbles or microspheres. And just the way that the glass uh, molecules of these are, it gives a, a very easily sandable, um, it allows the resin to dry hard and especially in conjunction with the cabosil, uh, but together they all work in, with the right proportions to make something that's easy to apply. Uh, and then easier to sand and I'm having some good success with this little recipe. Now, I save all my sushi and, uh, and Chinese food to go containers. You know, since they started bringing them out in these little plastic containers, uh, I keep them all and they're great for mixing stuff in. They got lids on them and whatever. But this specific uh, miso soup container has been my go-to measuring cup. I call it one cup probably not exact but um, I've been using it from the beginning so I have a couple of them exactly the same and I hold on to them now the mixture I'm using I like I said once again 40 ounces of uh, polyester resin uh, I'm using the same resin as I've been using on the boat uh, keeps the cost down and uh, once again I can you know mix up all different things with it, whether it be for bonding or for fillets or for, you know, just laminating. But in this case, we can also make fairing out of it. Now I got 40 ounces with 3%. That'll get mixed up until it's catalyzed. And, and I know that by the color. And then I'll throw it into the big bucket here. And then I'll add four one cup scoops of the cabosil. I'll throw in two of the talc and two of the glass bubbles. And then with this mixer, and I like this mixer so much because um, after you've done your mixing, these little plastic um, mixing paddle parts, uh, I don't have to worry about uh, cleaning it up right away. Once it's hardened, I can just crack everything off. It, it cracks off really easily. These don't break. They're very flexible. And, uh, and I've reused this you know, a couple dozen times now. Now, I don't know where I got it, but this I think is the key. The key to this whole thing, because to get the consistency you want, you want it to be able to be mixed and incorporated really well. And the only way to do that is by, uh, you know, a mixer, just like uh, if you were watching a baking show, you wouldn't mix everything by hand with a whisk. Um, you want your egg whites or your meringues being mixed by a stand mixer, right? So this will allow us to get a better consistency. But the trick is to drill a hole in a lid and then that lid doesn't have to clamp on, but it can just sit on there. And then once you have all your ingredients in, I throw the drill on, I put it on, you know, a low speed and I mix it in. And I really like this paddle for another reason is because it's got these little nodules that I can get into all the corners and uh, really mix and incorporate everything well. And then I'll give it a little peek. If I think it's, you know, not right there, not to a smooth peanut butter, which I'm, I like for the, for the sides of this boat, I can add styrene. Um, and styrene is a monomer, which basically, I mean, for lack of, of you know, knowing everything, uh, it just, it's kind of like, it loosens things up 
uh, it's like a plasticizer kind of I think and it just it makes the whole mixture a little easier to work with so then I get it on the on the high on the drill you'll see and I just mix that in until it's exactly the consistency I want now the whole time I know that I'm working on a clock because once I started catalyzing this I've got maybe uh, 15 minutes max, especially once you're adding all the ingredients uh, it might, and, and then you're working them. It wants to cook it a little bit. So knowing that I have to have everything ready to go. I have to have, uh, you know, gloves on, mask on. I have to have whatever I'm going to apply it to the hull. And then I have those stainless steel uh, skimmers that I'm going to skim. So I have to have all that ready to go. And then boom. We maybe by that time we maybe have five or ten minutes to work with so you got to be well organized and ready to go but uh, let's do it and then we could talk about it after
just completed another sanding session. So as you saw, I've probably done, I think, four layers of fairing. Uh, I tinted different layers and you can see um, how I've tinted one blue, one gray, and then a white tint. And that just allows me to kind of understand where I am sanding down to. But regardless of how many layers you put on, there comes a point when you need to lock it all in because you end up just sanding right through multiple layers, uh, even down into the fiberglass. And uh, it's counterproductive. So what I'm gonna do now is mix up some primer. Um, I've been going with a dark primer. One, I got a deal on it. And a good primer um, is expensive. So um, basically I am gonna mix up, it's a two part primer and it's gonna lock in all my work. I need to wipe everything down with acetone, give it a nice bath of acetone let it kind of dry, and then apply the primer over top of that. is that anytime you put some paint on your project it just uplifts your spirit all that hard work of course we got the other side to do um, but now that this is locked in I'm super happy with the lines of the gunnel here I think this has turned out exactly the way I wanted it now there's some rippling, there's some pinholes, there's a few areas that need to be fared out, like I said, but we'll get to that down the road. We'll jump over to the other side now. I'm gonna try to bang that out in three or four days. Okay, let's go over to the other side. A couple days of sanding, fiberglassing, fairing, more sanding and priming gets you a port side that looks like the starboard side and is almost done. Yeah. So that was, you know, a couple days of really hard work and uh, I'm feeling very positive about where we are now. Basically the whole hull is in primer. Uh, I just laid a little bit of fairing up here cause I'm trying to tie in the lines once again, like I did on the starboard side of the 
bow deck and have them blend into the gunnels. So that's drying and then I'll be able to sand that and prime that up. Uh, we are now about to hit the inside of the boat. So this next stage is all about getting these interior sides, starboard and port, to a point where I can pour some foam in them.